Hey YouTube, it is Monday morning, spring break 2014, and I am out here just relaxing. Uh, I'm cooking some chicken breast for lunch. Anyways, uh, this is my last semester at SFA. Uh, I haven't made a video in a long time uh, because I've been working, school, hanging out with a girlfriend, and all sorts of things, very good things. Also, I just got accepted to Dallas Theological Seminary. So after I get my criminal justice degree at SFA, I'll go on to Dallas Theological Seminary. And if you want to know more about that, just ask me and I'll make a video about it. Uh, but I was at work the other day, and I've been working at this job since December, and it's called the Lufkin Dream Center. And it's a alcohol and drug rehabilitation program that is faith-based, uh, completely focused on uh, Christ's love for us and how we can overcome things because... Uh, Christ has overcome all things. Um, anyways, I took a small break and I was eating an apple. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and sit down. And I chose to cut up the apple with my Tough Light. Excellent knife, hollow grind, extremely sharp from Cold Steel. By the way, Cold Steel just came out with some uh, new uh, proof videos. They're excellent. They have the Tough Light, the mini Tough Light, and it's just. It, it's always, uh, I've always, me and my brother, we've always enjoyed the videos from Cold Steel, so go check them out if you haven't already. Uh, but I was using my Tough Light to cut through the apple, and the Tough Light just slide right through the apple. I mean, I didn't expect the Tough Light to cut an apple that well. Um, I mean, the apple, it was like it wasn't there. But unfortunately for me, uh, we'll put that down right there, um, I was holding the apple like this, and I pressed that tough light right on through the apple and I cut myself. And I cut myself pretty good. Let me try to focus in on that. There we go. So it was a nice cut. And there's the tough light in the background. Um, I had to stop the bleeding and I was holding the apple. And as soon as the blade uh, sailed through the apple and then into my finger, I didn't move my hand at all, but I just. I threw the apple like 10 or 15 feet. So I started thinking about like, um, you know, like knife fighting or something like that. If I were to get cut in my hand uh, with all the nerves in your hand and in your fingers, you would probably just chunk the knife down on the ground if you could hold on. I, I don't think uh, a person with a normal, uh, you know, uh, pain uh, system or a nervous system would be able to hold onto a knife after they got sliced in their hand like that. Uh, but after I got cut, there's usually a, a few things I think about. First is the pain that, ow, I got cut. Secondly, I immediately grab my finger to try to stop the bleeding. And that's what I'm thinking about is trying to stop the bleeding. And, uh, you know, I, I go, I, I press on my finger to try to stop the bleeding. And I'm wondering if I'm going to need stitches. Um, so then the second thing I think about after the pain is the in inconvenience. I pretty much have to stop working for, you know, like an hour or so, try to, uh, you know, address the cut, and, uh, you know, I, I chose not to get stitches, I just put a band-aid, stopped the bleeding, and just went on, and uh, it wasn't a big deal, except for, you know, I got that cut, and I had to take care of now, uh, but another thing I think about when I uh, get cut like this is my finiteness. And, uh, you know, that I'm finite and the fact that I'm limited and I'm able to get hurt and, you know, sick and, uh, you know, I'm not all powerful or anything. So uh, that's one thing that I think about, um, you know, that, you know, it's kind of like when you, you have the flu or something, you, you remember on the times where you just feel okay and you're like striving to feel okay. Like that's the best feeling in the world is just to feel okay. But yeah, that's I think of how I'm limited and uh, how, you know, one day I, I'm going to die. You know, I mean, that's just something I think about when I get cut. I see my own blood. Uh, but thankfully, um, because of my faith in Christ and his resurrection, that uh, I will escape death. You know, death, it will be a temporary thing for me. And uh, that's, that's an excellent thought, too. But uh, that's just something uh, that you know, reminds me, you know, <laughs> when I get cut, that I start thinking about some things. So when you get cut, 
and I know we all do, you know, don't lie, if you play with knives, eventually, and see, I wasn't doing anything extremely, uh, you know, unthoughtful when I was using my knife, I was just cutting open the apple, although I could have uh, paid more attention to what was going on, but, um, you know, when you get cut, what do you think about? What are the feelings and thoughts that go through your mind when you see your own blood, uh, when you have to take care of yourself, or do you have other people to take care of you? That's another thing I thought about, is that very often when we think that we're very independent, but as soon as we get injured or something like that, um, we are very dependent on our friends and our loved ones. And uh, really, this veil of independency is just an illusion. We really depend a lot not only our friends and our loved ones, but on society and uh, other things. But uh, that was just the question. When you get cut, uh, what are some of the thoughts that go through your mind? And uh, hopefully me and my brother can make some videos um, with this beautiful spring break. And I hope you enjoy your spring break. Let me focus in on that. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching some videos. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye.